Today, we remember one of the most formidable punchers in the history of boxing. Looking at the career and somewhat difficult life of fighter Charles Sonny Liston. I had 147 fights. Uh, four world champions I fought. I fought nine guys in the top 10. And uh, nobody ever hit me like that guy. Every time he hit, he broke something. So I went to 10 rounds with him. And he broke my nose, my left cheekbone, and gave me 72 stitches. I was an intimidator until I fought Sonny Liston. Sonny Liston, I think, was possibly the, the greatest intimidator of all time. I've seen him stare guys down where they, they were so scared climbing up the ring steps they could barely get in the ring. Sonny Liston was born circa 1930 in one of the poorest areas of Arkansas. The family had 25 children from one father and two women. His father, Toby Liston, was an extremely difficult man who beat the children regularly, especially Charlie. Eventually, he got tired of such a life and left, moving to live with his mother in St. Louis. He was given the nickname Sonny, which eventually replaced his name. Sonny Liston spent much of his time on the street, often fighting and regularly having problems with the police. One day he went to jail for an attempted robbery of a gas station, and on January 15, 1950, he received a sentence for two counts of first-degree robbery. There was a priest at the prison who grew close to the big and strong Sonny, and this man would soon become one of Sonny Liston's closest friends. His friend suggested that Liston try his hand at boxing, and very soon, Sonny began to show incredible skill at the sport. Liston was released at the end of 1952 and settled in St. Louis, Missouri. Within a year, he defeated the strongest amateur boxers. And on September 2, 1953, Sonny Liston turned professional. He won the Golden Gloves here, then he went to the national championships where he had three fights. None lasted more than three minutes. So what do you do with them then? You gotta turn them pro, there's no point keeping them an amateur. So we did. Sonny won his first six fights, but the seventh, he lost to Marty Marshall by a split decision. During the fight, Liston's jaw was broke in several places. But despite this, he went through the fight the entire distance. Sonny did not break down after this defeat and again began to win defeating opponent after opponent. Two of his best victories were over the famous Cleveland Williams and Zora Folly. Well, from the outset, I'd say that Sonny Liston belongs among the five greatest heavyweights of all time. He had a left jab in front of him, which was probably the best in all heavyweight history. Had the kind of a jab that went through you. Now here's a guy who came into the gym and would hit the speed bag so hard that it would come off its hinges. He knocked the stuffing out of the headgear. I mean, this guy could really hit the stitching on the headgear. When he hit you, it came apart. I think it's fair to say that he was considered like a Joe Lewis, like a Mike Tyson, or even in the way that George Foreman was considered early in his career as this absolutely fearsome, unbeatable force of nature. This was the toughest guy on the planet. He literally hammered out danger. And when Sonny Liston came into the ring scowling at you, guys started bleeding during the national anthem. Who do you want to fight in the ring in your next engagement? The man got the title. Mr. Floyd Patterson, currently the heavyweight champion. Let us ask you this, Sonny. What, you, uh, what have you heard are your chances of getting that title fight? I think it's very good from what I hear. Liston was eager to fight Floyd Patterson, who held the title of world heavyweight champion. Many did not want the fight to take place, but finally Floyd himself accepted the match. 
They didn't want me to fight him either because there was a good chance of him winning the fight. And I guess uh, uh, if he should win the fight, he would represent the black race. I just felt that here's a man who's had a very similar life to mine, and I felt that he should get a chance, so I overrode my manager and I gave him a shot. Uh, I think he's proved himself as far as being the number one contender is concerned. I personally think that he has every right to fight for the championship despite his, despite his unfortunate background. Cus D'Amato had no choice but to organize the fight, which took place on September 25th, 1962, in Chicago. The entire boxing community, including President Kennedy, demanded that Patterson win. But, to the disappointment of his fans, it took Liston just over two minutes to knock out Patterson and become the new heavyweight champion. Liston moves out to face the big chance of his 28 years of a turbulent life. The Liston hook to the head is the first good punch of the fight. The challenger moving in. The champion shaking off the effect of that left hook. Raising right and a solid left to the cheekbone, drop the champion. Liston's monstrous left hook was the final blow in the fight. just seemed to sag with the recognition that there was no welcome here for him. The rematch with Patterson took place on July 22, 1963 in Las Vegas. And for the second time, Sonny left no chance of victory for Floyd Patterson. Liston looked at his opponents, and in his eyes, they saw the glare of an executioner. Many of Liston's rivals recalled that his facial expression never changed through the entire fight, and some of them said it was kind of a mask that he wore. While Sonny was the world champion, one very bright, promising, and confident fighter appeared in the world. His name was Cassius Clay, later known as Muhammad Ali. It was he who, at the beginning of 1964, was the main contender for the world crown. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Cassius Marcellus Clay. He's young, he's handsome, they know it. He's a poet, a prophet, and many people believe he'll be the next heavyweight champion of the world. What about Cassius? Well, I would imagine uh, if he would come to me, I'd kill him. And if he run, I'm going to catch him and kill him. You tell me to your camera? Your TV man, your radio man, and you right by the whole world. If Sonny lives to hook me, I'll kiss his feet in the rain. Despite the love for Ali from the journalists and fans, his chances of winning were only 1.25 to 7. This is the fight that everyone has been clamoring for, and as of this minute, biggest of all it is now official. I'm the greatest. That's why it's the biggest in all history, because I'm here. I'm the biggest. Somebody will die at ringside from shock. 
The opinion of most of the observers was that these hysterics that Clay was going through were fear. But of course they weren't. He was psyching the old bear out. February 1964, Miami. The sports arena saw several celebrities, sports stars, 9,000 fans, and millions of television viewers. Most fans predicted an easy victory for Liston in the early rounds, but everybody's prediction was wrong, as the champion was confronted with a young opponent that was moving at the speed of a lightweight. Left lead that might keep the champion a bit off balance. Heavyweights don't fight like this, commentators said in disbelief as they witnessed a young Cassius Clay moving madly about the ring, preventing Liston from landing any blows. At the end of the fourth round, a strange situation happened. Something got into Cassius Clay's eyes, almost blinding him and stopping the fight. But his trainer calmed the boxer and tried to wash his eyes, telling him to avoid Liston for round five. After the fight, it was claimed that the reason was an ointment that was smeared on Liston's gloves. The next shocking thing that happened was when Clay was having difficulty in his corner between the fourth and fifth rounds, something in his eyes, nobody knew exactly what it was. He told Angela Dundee, his trainer, he said he was blind, he couldn't see. He wanted to quit. Dundee sent him back out there. He said, if you can't fight, run. Angelo just told him, he said, just stay away from him until he'll go away. Ladies and gentlemen, we don't know exactly what happened. They're yelling from Cassius Clay's corner. Something got in his right eye. Uh, however, he's blinking badly. Sonny's going to try to pull it on. After defending for five rounds, in the sixth round, Cassius Clay's sight was restored, and he continued his unorthodox style, leading the fight. In the break between the 6th and 7th rounds, Sonny Liston refused to continue the fight, giving the victory to Clay. I'm busting out here. great, I don't have a mark on my face, yeah. and I upset Sonny Liston, and I just turned 22 years old. I must be the greatest. Right. I told the world, I talk to God every day. If God's with me, can't nobody be against Alice, me, Sonny. I shook up uh, the world. Brother, I know Cassius, God. I know Cassius, the real God. Cassius, wait a minute, wait a minute. Cassius. I shook up the world. I shook up the world! Oh, oh, Joe, I shook up the world! Oh, wait a minute, Cash, wait a minute. Hold you on. must listen to me! Now listen to I me. am the double! All right, hold it, ladies yeah. and gentlemen. You expect to get a rematch? Well, if Clay want to give me a rematch, I'll take it. And if he don't, imagine I'll forget it. The rematch took place on May 25th, 1965. And this controversial fight raised even more questions than their first match. It ended halfway through the first round, and there was much confusion as to the actual events and whether or not Sonny was knocked out. Follow. Claims of the fight being fixed led the knockout blow to be called a phantom punch by journalists. There was a punch, and a hard punch that landed in a vulnerable place. There is footage that shows Liston's neck being snapped back by that punch. The thing that bothered me is Liston could take a hell of a punch. I'd seen them fight guys that were devastating punches. I'd seen them fight those guys. I've seen those guys knock the daylights out of him for a while, but then he would always come on to knock him out. What did you think of uh, the fight last night? I think it was a fake fight. Very fake. Well, what did you think of? I thought it was a phony. Let me tell you, the minute he hit the floor, 
I heard they said fix and you can hear it right. Like, do you hear the people hollering fix? Yeah, I heard it. I heard them say fix, fix, soon as he fell. I said, get up! Come on! I mean I mean fix. I don't know nothing about no fix. After the second defeat to Ali, Liston again began to live his life, no longer needing to act the part of a world champion. He never fought for the world title again, though he did continue to box at a lower level. He dealt with average boxers without much trouble, until, in December 1969, he ran into Leotis Martin, who was not afraid of Liston's terrible gaze, and managed to knock out the former world champion. Liston fought his last match on June 29, 1970, against the famous boxer Chuck Wepner, and defeated him. For this fight, Liston received $13,000, but he did not get a cent of the money. A few weeks before the fight, Sonny asked his friend Lem Banker to bet $10,000 in his name that the heavyweight Mac Foster would beat Jerry Quarry. However, in round six, Quarry knocked out Foster, Sonny asked Banker for a postponement. After defeating Wepner, he first gave $10,000 to Banker, and the remaining $3,000 went to pay his seconds, coaches, sparring partners, and other people from his team. Sonny was left with nothing. On January 5, 1971, Sonny Liston's wife, Geraldine, returned home from a trip and discovered her husband's body. Geraldine found Sonny at 8.30 p.m. and notified the police and close relatives. The police arrived three hours later and found that Liston had died approximately six days previous. I called my attorney and uh, told him that Sonny was dead. He said, how you know he's dead? I said, well, he's laying, I can see he's swolled up, you know? So he said, well, lock up and don't say anything. I think Geraldine is under the impression that a uh, phone call was made to the authorities shortly thereafter like 15 minutes. He said, call your doctor and call the police, and that's what it did, like in 15, 20 minutes. But in fact, a large amount of time passed, something closer to two or three hours before the authorities were called. It's a mystery to me too, I don't know. I'm telling you, the police were right there in about five to 10 minutes. Sonny Liston, the former heavyweight boxing champion, was found dead last night in his Las Vegas home by his wife. He was 38. He had been dead for at least a week. An autopsy failed to show the cause of death, and further studies will be made. Police said that they found small quantities of what appeared to be heroin and marijuana in the home. Officially stated that the cause of death was an overdose of heroin. However, many of his friends claimed that Liston was afraid of needles and even canceled flights to Europe in order not to get vaccinated. Where was the surgical tubing that he would have probably used to wrap around his arm to expose a vein? Where was the spoon used for cooking? Had it been moved? None of this stuff was present. Scars on the arms of Sonny Liston, which at that time uh, appears they were interpreted as uh, needle marks. People say, well, he couldn't have done drugs. He was afraid of needles. Other people say, oh no, he was a drug addict. Few people from his circle believed that Liston could take drugs. No one knows exactly when Liston was born, and no one knows exactly how he died. He was a mystery to others, and even to himself, but he managed to leave a bright mark in the history of boxing as a fighter whom opponents were afraid to fight. This is the world of boxing. Thank you for watching. Please press the like button and comment below, as well as subscribe to the channel so you won't miss any new episodes about legends of the past.